Okay, so we learned Gesell Vienna Lemma. And using Gesell Vienna Lemma, we uh, expressed plane partitions inside a rectangular box as a non intersecting lattice path. And then we were able to express uh, its cardinality as a determinant. But this is not quite what we want because we want to prove this. So this will, if you can evaluate this, this will only prove this formula when Q equals 1. But we want to have the general Q there as a generating function, not just a number. So how can we do that? We need to consider uh, the weight of each lattice path. Okay, uh, so for a lattice path L, let's define because so here we have a weight of pi, right? Because we want to compute uh, the sum of this, not just the number. So we want to understand what this number means over here. Can you, but actually it's not that difficult. So can you read off this number from by looking at just uh, this? Suppose that we don't know this yet, but you are only given this non-intersecting lattice path. How can you say the cardinality of this or, or the size of this plane per corresponding plane partition? So if you consider the number of, so what does this mean? The part, uh, the upper part of this path will be the number of uh, entries at least one, right? So that, if you look at this part, if you compute the area of this, you will compute the first layer of this uh, plane partition, if you consider this uh, stack plane partition as a stack of boxes. This will count the first layer, the area of this will be the first layer of this, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That will be the cardinal or the area of this. Okay? And the second layer, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, will be computed if you uh, compute the area above this path. Similarly, the last one, this 3, 3 will be counted over here. So the cardinality or, or the size of this plane partition is the sum of these areas. Okay? So it is reasonable to define the weight, uh, let's say absolute value of L is the area uh, uh, here. If this is L, area uh, of this in this region, okay? Then if <coughs> pi corresponds to uh, L1 dot 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 LC, then clearly this is equal to L1 plus dot 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 LC. That means this is uh, the generating function for plane partition, A, B, C, Q to the size of this, by this one-to-one -one correspondence and uh, by this property of the bijection for all lattice path. Uh, okay, that's L1 dot 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 LC inside this non-intersecting lattice path, U1 dot 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 u c v1 dot 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 v c q l1 l c all right we have corres well, we have not just one to one correspondence this but this one to one correspondence is good enough so that we can rewrite this weight this way is this clear 
right, so now let's go back to this slide again. We express this as the determinant, non-intersecting path here. So we want to have something like this. So maybe, okay. Oh no. All right. So we want to have like, okay, because this is generating function for all non-intersecting lattice path, we expect this to be determinant of something where instead of number from number of lattice path, we have uh, okay. summation for all path from u i v j. If you add one, that will be just number, but q to l. We expect something like this, right? Because our goal, first, our first goal is to express this as a determinant. And because this, this is true, this is true, because this is generating function for non-intersecting analysis path using the Kessel Vienna lemma, we may be able to express this as a determinant, right? But the thing is, this is not true. This is not true. Because the Kessel Vienna lemma does not work here. Why? Uh, in this Gessel Vienna lemma, we have cancellation. If you remember this, you have to remember this. We have this, uh, if we have crossing, uh, intersecting uh, let two paths, we switch the, the tails. We switch the tails. If you switch the tails and suppose that the weight changes, then we cannot have cancellation. If you switch the two things, the if you can cancel those, if you want to cancel these two pairs, then you, we must have the same weight except the sign. Otherwise, we don't have cancellation. So we have to be very careful when we are dealing with weight, weighted path instead of just number. So how can we fix this? There is, fortunately, there is a way to fix this. Fix this. This is not true. So we want. So that means this is not a good uh, candidate for this weight. Uh, okay. So we want to define weight weight of L. Uh, Mm, actually, this this would depend depend upon i and j, so that such that it is equal to uh, this is equal to determinant of something. So basically, this is some kind of weight. So instead of adding one, we add some some q to the power something, but not this one. This is not good because it does not preserve the weight when you switch the tails. So how can you do that? That's our goal, to define this. All right? Is this uh, clear what I'm going to do? All right. I'm not going to define this yet. We will do, we'll see this. In the process of this proof, we will see this. So just suppose that we have such a weight, OK? Uh, but instead, um, all right, yeah, I, I think I need to say a little more. I'm going to remember uh, this ij, so let's put it this way, ij of L. So weight depends on the first uh, starting and ending points. Okay? This is a little more complicated than this, but yeah, it will work. So this is ij. We want to define this weight. All right, now just suppose we have such a weight and then try to see what, uh, what we do, what we can do. So weight, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. 
because it's too long, let me simply put this like this. Weight of lattice path u i v j because it's too long to write this all the time. Okay? This is our notation. So weight of L U I V J. That means basically we have for every I J pair, I J uh, fixed, we consider all paths from U I to V J, but we count some kind of weight. We add some number. We associate some number to each path and then we add them. That will give us this IJ entry. And by definition of this, uh, this thing, we consider all uh, permutation in SC, sine of pi, and weight of this. L, U1, dot, 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 U, C, W, pi, 1, dot, dot, dot. W pi C. Okay. This means some of the weights inside this lattice path. Okay. This is just the definition of the determinant. Now we we will just do the same thing as we did for the when we prove uh, the Kessel Vienna lemma. We will try to uh, argue that the Kessel Vienna lemma works. So let's consider one uh, one path. Okay, take one path. If none intersecting, we will just leave it there. Or otherwise, we will switch the tails, and then we will cancel this weight with something else. We will, we're gonna, because here we have many pluses and many minuses, we're going to cancel all the minuses so that we will end up getting just lattice path with plus signs, uh, weight with plus sign. So uh, suppose it's intersecting, intersecting. So we, because otherwise we will just stay, leave it there. And Li, uh, Suppose that L I L J uh, intersect. J less than I intersect. We will take uh, intersecting pair, okay? But we will assume a little more. We assume we can assume that L I some adjacent. Uh, adjacent lattice path are intersecting. Why? In other words, we can say that J is I plus 1. Why is this? Why, why can we assume this? Any idea? We are not just taking any two intersecting pair, but we will take adjacent intersecting pair. Do you think uh, this is clear? Why can we assume this? Can you tell me why? Just think about this. Okay. Let me use this. Uh, so the points are arranged like this, right? So U1, U2, like this. 3, 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we cannot only have intersecting pair like, like this, but we can also have, so th they are kind of separated by 2. We can also have inter consecutive L I L I plus one, which are intersecting. Because if you have something that are far apart like this, just take another one here. It will, it must intersect either with this or this, because they are already intersecting. So if they are kind of far, take another one in in between, 
then we will have shorter one until if you do this you will have just a consecutive intersecting pair right Th so we can assume this so take this i is uh, our largest among this so we uh, now we have taken li, li plus 1 intersecting, and i is maximal with this property. Okay. Uh, right. So the situation looks like this. Now um, this is i, ui, I mean. This is ui plus 1. And it is here like... Sigma no, W Sigma I W Sigma I and W Sigma I plus one they can be kind of far from each other like this. So um, okay, let me draw this carefully. Okay, like this. And I think yeah, I should go this way. And this goes like like that. All right. We have some intersecting pair. They are adjacent. So we will do the same thing. To take the last point, P, and then swap the tails. So Li prime, Li plus 1 prime are defined as before, meaning change this. So, so this is Li. This was Li plus 1. And Li plus Li prime is now you go all the way to P and then you use the other path. This is Li prime. Lj prime, Li plus 1 prime goes like this. This and then this. Lj, oh, I plus 1 prime. Okay? Now let's compare uh, Li prime and let's see what happens to their some of their sizes. Let's compare this and this. If this was true, then our first attempt would be working. But for, unfortunately, it's not the case. So what's the difference between these two sums? OK. So here, uh, let's see this one first. L1, this from here to there. Yeah. We have, you have to be careful. Um, let me use this. So on the right-hand side, the usual, in the usual order, or the original order, we would have computed this part. This part and this part, right? This is uh, over here. Is this okay? But what about this? Now L prime is from here to here. So instead of that, we will count, we will, let's use a uh, red one. We will compute this, this part. This is L1 prime. L2 prime, what is L2 prime? So, we have something uh, more over here. This part is missing. But except this part, they are the same. Is, it, is this right? except this part. So what is this part? What is the length of this, this rectangle, this side? 
What is the length of this? 1. Because we are assuming this. What is the length of this? Sigma i plus 1 minus sigma i. Sigma i plus 1 minus sigma i. That means this, they are not equal, but we have to add uh, what, yeah, the sigma i minus sigma i plus 1. Because this part is missing, we have to take minus of this, so that is this. All right. So if this we don't, if we didn't have this, the original, so first attempt will be okay, but not okay because of this this thing. Then what is uh, sigma and sigma prime? So L originally L was uh, this part is L. L was in. Okay. Uh, sorry about this. It should be sigma, right? the sigma. So L was there. What is L prime? So sigma prime of 1, sigma prime of C. What is the difference between uh, sigma and sigma prime? So si if sigma is like sigma 1, dot, 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 sigma i, sigma i plus 1, dot, 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 sigma n, sigma prime, is the same except this adjacent one. We just switch these two. All right. This is i position. So this is the fourth p position one to i i plus one n. So we want to consider this together. And the idea is we define the weight in this way. Uh, so define. for L in the path from Ui to Wj, mm, weight, so weight depends on i and j. The weight is equal to, uh, okay, yeah, I think you can, you can forget about this weight because we already know that it's from uh, i, j. The weight of L, so weight depends upon uh, the starting points and ending points together but it is already in, inside. The weight is equal to L, which is what we want, plus this. Plus uh, I, I minus J. So we need extra, extra uh, thing like this. Because then this, what is this? Uh, what is the difference of these two? So here, um, okay, it gets a little. So if you consider the weight, okay, I think I need more space. So let's compare these two weights, weight of Li prime weight of L i plus 1. Let's see if this is true. L i prime, weight of L i plus 1 prime. We want this to be true because after switching the tails, we want to have the same weight. But this one, L i plus, so i, i minus sigma i, right? Because uh, it the starting point is i, and ending point is sigma i. What is this? L i plus 1, i plus 1, i plus 1, sigma i plus 1. The left hand side. The right hand side, is this equal to this? L i prime. Now, i goes from, uh, so in this path, uh, v i goes to w sigma i plus 1, because we uh, switch it at the ending point, sigma i plus 1, plus 
l i uh, plus one prime this because now v i plus one goes to sig uh, w sigma i. But this is true. This is true. Yes. Because of this. Because of uh, this relation. If you cancel, if you cancel uh, this i i plus one, you can cancel this thing. If you cancel everything, you will get that exactly that thing. So it works. It's kind of a very nice idea. So using this weight, uh, we can cancel these two things, uh, L and L prime. So after this, we will only get what? Non-intersecting uh, lattice path. Because if there are, cancel, uh, there are intersection, we can make these to another one. And they have the same weight except the sign, so they will cancel in the sum. So we will get only non-intersecting uh, lattice path. Yeah, I think I, my explanation is not clear enough. Yeah. Any question? <laughs> That's basically the idea. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, actually I made a mistake because it should be Q2 or something, but okay. So, so summation uh, sine weight of So we get all the cancellation. So now we have like uh, fixed point. Pi must be uh, identity. Fixed point can only occur. Okay. Yeah, maybe we have some path L. L C. Uh, we consider all path from end, uh, starting point and ending point. And we consider the weight of uh, L1. Yeah, to be consistent with that, I think we should have something like this. Q to the weight of L1 plus dot, 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 weight of L2. And they all be canceled. They be all canceled with a sign of L. Again, this is going to be a sign of permutation pi. If it is, uh, the ending points are like a switch it according to this permutation pi. Then after the cancellation, we have non-intersecting. Non-intersecting uh, lattice path. And Q to the weight. And the sign is one always because we have only uh, identity permutation. Okay. Now what? Uh, what is this? Is this what we want? So if you write, if you use the definition of the weight, non-intersecting, that is path, Q to L1. This is weight of Li equals 
the size of Li plus I, I minus I, because I goes to I. So it is indeed Li. So it is just L1 plus Lc. So even though uh, the weight is defined slightly different, differently, if you focus on, if you restrict yourself to non-intersecting cases, then we get exactly just Li, the, the size of Li without this uh, funny factor. Because Ij is always, I goes to I, not other one. And this is the generating function for lattice path and the generating function for plane partitions. So we expressed the generating function for plane partitions as a determinant. So theorem, the, therefore, thus, generating function for plane partitions a, b, c, q to pi. We, we know that uh, this is equal to L1 dot 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 Lc in the non-intersecting lattice path. But we, pr we just proved that this is the equal to the determinant of this summation. Um, Oh, we already used this definition. Weight of uh, L U I W J. But what is this? This is the sum over all lattice path from U I to W J. Q to the weight of L. And this is what? Uh, the same L, Q to the weight is this defined to be this plus I, I minus J. So it, this I, I minus Q to the I, I minus J can be factored out. And for all L, Q to the uh, length of this or size of this lattice path. And can you tell me what the final, uh, can you tell me what this uh, quantity is? So it's the factor is like this. What is this sum? Think about the meaning. We, have, we, are, we are given this two path, a uh, path, Starting point is UI, ending point is WJ. And then we count this area. The generating function for lattice path. What is this? Generating function for partitions is equivalent to generating function for partitions inside this box. If you look at this as a Ferris diagram or Young diagram, then this is just, uh, if this is a point from what is UI? We know that UI is UI was okay, let's go back. UI was minus I comma I. U, WJ was B minus J A plus J. So the uh, okay. So this is like this A plus B by Q binomial coefficient. B my plus I minus J. If you consider this rectangle, then you will get this. So we know exactly what this IJ entry is. So the theorem, finally, finally, yeah, still proposition because we want to have theorem at the end. For all plane partitions A, B, C, inside the ABC box, Q, the generating function for this, is equal to the determinant of this, Q to the I, I minus J, A plus B, B plus I minus J sub Q 
i j one to c. This is it. We express the generating function for plane partitions as a determinant. I, uh, because I cannot uh, do this more or one more time, I recommend if you are not really uh, convinced of this proof, try to uh, follow this uh, or you can read the lecture note and then try to do it by yourself until you completely understand that. But basically what I, I said, um, hopefully all the necessary steps to prove this. But if this is your first time, it may, be, it, it may take some time for you to fully um, understand this. So you need to spend some time after the lecture. All right? Any question about this? This kind of argument is very typical in this uh, plane partition uh, topic. So we will use this uh, more, 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 more than like, I think maybe one or two or more than that. So you will see this kind of argument again, also in your, in your uh, homework. All right, so we express this as a determinant. So how can you evaluate this? Because the theorem is, theorem is what? It's not this. Theorem is Q to the this is equal to this product I one to A, J one to B, C uh, K one to C this. So it remains to evaluate this determinant. The proof. We need to evaluate the determinant. That's not an easy task, actually. Evaluate a determinant is usually very difficult. Homework. <laughs> you can do this. Because there, the uh, evaluation of this is outlined in your textbook, so if you read your textbook and you will be able to evaluate this by yourself. So this is one of the homework problems. But it is not, an, uh, not a simple, simple task. You need, uh, there are several steps to evaluate this. You need to use some, ma many determinant, many arguments to evaluate determinant, like uh, kratan teller's formula and things like that. So there are several uh, properties of the determinant, but it is they are all uh, outlined in the textbook, so you can do that. Any question? All right. By the homework, we now know this is true. Mm. So this is one proof which is which qu is quite involved. We use many things, but yeah, this is the first step toward the combinatorics of plane partitions, I, I would say. It involves many interesting techniques like non-intersecting lattice path, which is combinatorics, and evaluating determinant, which is uh, linear algebra or... Okay, so this will... So th th from this we now know the generating function for one class of plane partitions. Plane partitions inside the box without any re restriction. And there are nine more classes of plane partitions, right? According to symmetries. Of course, we cannot do this. We cannot do everything, but we will cover some more. 
And the next topic is one of them, cyclically symmetric plane partitions. Okay, so let me move on to the next thing. Before, I need to define some object. Shifted plane partition. Definition. Let me define, begin with uh, partitions first. So suppose we have a partition. So partition with distinct parts. So lambda 1 greater than lambda 2 greater than lambda L, like that. They must be distinct. Then the shifted di uh, Young diagram, Young diagram of lambda is the array of uh, squares such that I throw has uh, lambda I boxes as before. Right? This is just like Young diagram, use your Young diagram. But we have a, one more uh, condition. And it is shifted to the right by one, by uh, one unit. So yeah, maybe just the example will be enough. So this is a shifted Young diagram of, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Oh, yeah, let me have uh, one more box here. So it's 5. Because it is shifted like this, the numbers must be strictly decreasing. You cannot have the same number because even though we, we may have the same border here, but they are shifted, so they are different. The numbers are different. So we are always like this. So this kind of arrangement of boxes or squares is called a shifted Young diagram. And a shifted plane partition is the filling of this. Is a filling of a shifted Young diagram. Young diagram with positive integers, positive integers, such that we have the usual condition. Uh, entries are weakly increasing or decreasing. along rows and columns. So, for example, like 9, 9, 9, 9, 8, 8, 7, 1, 1, 1, 2, something like that. So if you go this way, weakly decreasing. If you go down, weakly decreasing. So it's exactly the same as the usual plane partition. But we only use a shifted diagram. OK? So we defined a shifted plane partition. We have one more definition. Uh, Plane partition shifted or not, a plane partition or shifted one. Maybe we have shifted, it doesn't, uh, we'll shifted or not is called strict Defi definition. If uh, the entries 
are strictly de decreasing. Only along columns. It can be weakly decreasing in, along uh, rows. So example, um, yeah, I'm not going to draw this diagram, just I'm going to draw the numbers. This is an example of uh, shift, uh, strict, strict. This is a strict shifted uh, plane partition. Also, this one, five, five, four, two, four, three, two, one. So th this is just u u ordinary plane partition. So this is weakly increasing, decreasing along rows, but strictly decreasing along columns. If you look at each column, they are strictly decreasing. Again, some here. So this is the definition of strict plane, uh, uh, shifted or non-shifted plane partition. And for a shifted case, uh, so suppose that this is shifted plane partition, shifted plane partition. Then uh, diagonal of pi means the sequence of diagonal entries. Diagonal di diagonal entries in increasing order. Uh, yeah, increasing order. Increasing order. So, for example, in this case, diagonal of pi here. Diagonal of pi is equal to 3, 6, 8, 9. We just read off this. this. These entries are called diagonal entries, only this part. In the textbook, this is called a row, row leader. In the textbook, but I think diagonal entries are more common, say. Question? Okay. Um, so these uh, shifted plane partitions will be used to uh, study uh, cyclically symmetric plane partitions. And because it takes time to draw the diagram, I'm going to use this lecture notes that I downloaded. Right, we already did that. So here, uh, so cyclically symmetric plane partition, we, we saw this in the first, first week of this semester. So cyclically symmetric plane partition is a plane partition that is invariant under the rotation of one 20 degree. If you rotate this 120, then it stays the same. It looks exactly the same. It is a cyclically symmetric plane partition. And we know how to decompose this into uh, so-called shells. So this is the first shell, meaning the set of boxes with coordinate, one of the coordinates being 1. This is a second cell, one of the coordinate is 2. Sec a third cell, one of the coordinates, uh, three, except those are uh, contained already there. Okay. And now, because we know the every shell must be uh, invariant under the rotation. Okay. This is al al already uh, cyclically symmetric. This is also cyclically symmetric, right? They must be all sym cyclically symmetric. So we don't really need all of them. We only need this part. Uh, we only need this part, right? Or, or, or uh, I think it's easier to consider. Only we only need the bottom part, because the bottom part will completely determine the other, the, the other world, because we know it's cyclically symmetric. Again, here and here, so we stack them, stack the bottom parts this way. 
Okay. So they are they are their order their, their arrangements are exactly the same as uh, from the original one. We just took this part from the original plane partition. Okay. Then this is indeed a bijection. If you have this part, you can recover this. So I'm going to rewrite this as a uh, shifted plane partition like this. So we have six rows, uh, six boxes in the first uh, in the first floor. Six, five, five, four, three, three. So that goes over here. And the second uh, floor, three, two, two, three, two, two. The third floor, we have just one. We uh, array, we write these numbers in this cyclic, uh, in this shifted sense, shifted way. All right. So from a cyclically symmetric plane partition, we obtain a shifted plane partition. Okay, but we don't get any sh shifted plane partition. We have to uh, specify what these are. They must be, uh, first of all, uh, strict. If you go down along a column, they are strictly decreasing. Why is this true? Uh, what is this five? Five is uh, this five is the third one here. So these two are stacked on the same same uh, the, in the same layer or same location. Then because of because this is shifted, because we have one additional spot over here, must be strictly this one must be strictly less than five. Uh, yeah. So for instance, even though they are in the same, they are ending, ending parts are the same because of this shifted business, this one is smaller than two. So we always have a strict thing. And also, because this is a cyclical symmetric, if you rotate this part this way, we must have this part. What does that mean in here? So this must be equal to this. What does that mean? What is this? The largest part in this uh, first row, six. This is the number of parts, one, two, three, four, five, six. So here we must have this condition. In each row, the largest part or the first part is equal to the the row length or the number of number of parts in that row. Six is equal to the number of parts here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Three is equal to the number of parts in the second row, one, two, three. One is equal to the number of row, number of parts, one. And these characterize uh, the uh, shifted plane partition coming from cyclically symmetric plane partition. Okay, so this is a bijection. All right. So if we define CSPP of R to be the set of cyclically symmetric plane partitions inside this box B R R R, the the box with three sides equal to R, all R. This gives a bijection from cyclically symmetric plane partitions to this, this object. Sh strict shifted plane partitions such that each row, the maximum element is equal to the row length. And the largest part must be less than or equal to R. All right, now we have this object. We, we, we're going to work on this object because it's easier for us to study. And we let me introduce one more definition. So here we have a strict plane partition, but we're going to specify the diagonal. So CR of A1 up to AM is the uh, plane partitions inside this with diagonal entries are given by this. So this plane partition is inside this uh, set, C sub 6. 1, 3, 6. 
Okay. The, then by this bijection, number of cyclically symmetric plane partitions inside this box is equal to the uh, number of shifted, uh, strict shifted plane partitions with this condition. That is, of course, equal to this, because this uh, is a disjoint union of this. We just divide them according to their diagonal entries. So if you can compute this number, then we will be done. It will be sum of this. Any question? So you need to uh, understand this thing. Mm. They. Oh uh, yeah, a, they are in increasing order. They have to be in increasing order because we only consider the we we, we assume the diagonal entries are in increasing order. Yeah. So this is sum over all subset of uh, this means a set from set of integers from one one through r. Even we have a empty empty set here. So m can be any number between zero and r. More questions? Okay. Our next step is to express this as a non-intersecting lattice path. Because that's the way we can now use Gesevian lemma. Okay. More questions before I move on? So here the condition is so a1 less than a2 less than dot 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 am. So this is just a subset of R. Um, so basically that is this. I can use. So the condition is is this. Well, that is equivalent to this. Uh, C number. Uh, if you want, yeah, M goes from zero to N, R. So this is what that means. And m equals zero, that means we have nothing, no diagonal entry. That means we have empty partition. So we have count one for m equals zero case. OK? So let, let's see this again. Yeah, that's what this means. So actually, it's quite simple. We just divide this into uh, plane partitions with given diagonal entries. Any more question? Is this clear? Okay. Now our goal is to express this as a non-intersecting lattice path. Okay. Uh, I think I, it's, it's better if I use uh, this diagram now. All right. Uh, so we now express a1, AM, these two are non intersecting, intersecting lattice path, lattice path. So we have this 6, 5, 5, 4, 3, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1. We know that this is in C6 of 1, 3, 6. Okay? This is the same same example. Now uh, the condition is they are strictly decreasing along each column like that. Now let me uh, slightly 
change the arrangement. Just the usual sense, 3, 2, 2, 1. Then the condition is, four, this must be less than this, less than this, less than this, and less than this. Okay? I didn't do anything very special. And from here, I'm going to write this as a non-intersecting lattice path. So, uh, so okay, let, let me draw this and then explain. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this this represents the last one. This represents three, two, two. So, uh, so three, three, two, two. Okay. So this young diagram, if you consider this grid, represents three, two, two. And six. So it's going to be six, five, five. Four, three, three. So we, yeah, of course, like that. Yeah, there, yeah. If you look at the Young diagram, they are like this. Okay. So I just drew the Young diagram, or lattice path corresponding to the Young diagram, for each. And here we see that it's not intersecting. They don't have anything in common. And this is guaranteed because of this condition. Because, uh, let's look at this. Five. Five means uh, this five, right? Three means this three. So if you look at these adjacent uh, vertical, vertical uh, things, because this part is strictly less than, uh, this part is strictly less than this, they cannot have common vertex. So this is, uh, but if, if they are the same, they may have the common vertex like this, but that doesn't happen. So it is always non-intersecting. And we know that, what, what we know that is that this part, the, if this is six, the number of parts must be six. So this, we don't need all of this. We only need, this part, because this and this, they are kind of determined. These two are kind of determined as well. So what we need, the essential parts are like this. Uh, the essential parts are like this. And also um, this. And yeah, just this. So these three paths, this path is just an empty path, just starting and ending points are the same. These parts are the essential parts. So let me re rewrite this. This. Uh, this. And. I express that thing if you want. I just use this part. Okay, now let's uh, look at the co coefficient of or coordinate of this. This one is if you say, uh, okay, mm, let's think of this as. Yeah, let me write this first. Okay, we know uh, this is A1, this is A2, this is A3. So the length here is A3, right? And because we uh, subtract this by 1, so this one will be uh, A3 minus 1. Yeah, we, we are assuming that this is the origin and uh, increasing this way and this way. So A3 minus 1, comma 0, this part, 
0 comma a3 minus 1. What about this? a2 minus 1 comma 0, 0 comma a2 minus 1. This one, a1 uh, one minus 1 comma 0, 0 comma a1 minus 1. We may have just, just one dot here if a1 equals 1, but otherwise we will have something like a real path. So this gives a bijection between CR A1 dot 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 ARM to uh, between this and the set of non intersecting lattice path uh, where we have lattice path. L i goes from let's put it this way L i is from 0 comma a i minus 1 to a i minus 1 comma 0 so we have n path non intersecting like this this is L1 L2 L3 uh, no no L1 L2 L3 okay and can we apply Gesell-Vienna lemma here? If you look at the di uh, arrangement of the starting and ending point, yes. If the, you if you switch two point, uh, ending points, you will always get non uh, intersecting one. We always get intersection. So it works. That means the cardinality of this is equal to the determinant of this. Uh, the uh, determinant the Number of lattice path here is very easy. A, oh yeah, a i plus it should be i j, a j minus two, a i minus one. Determine as a determinant. So the number is easy, but we want not just one number, but we want the generating function. Okay. So now I need to go to the sl uh, PDF again. Any question before I go switch the slide? So our goal now is to consider the um, Q to the power of the size of the plane partition, cyclically symmetric plane partition. We want to count the number of boxes, not just all, all such numbers. All right, so the generating function for this. So we have a uh, plane partition, cyclically symmetric plane partition, like this. We change this to this shell and then this, and then we obtained this plane, uh, uh, shift, strict shifted plane partition with the condition, and we change this into this lattice path. Now, we want to count number of boxes here. We can do that. So suppose we, we're going to decompose each shell this way. This is the things in a kind of skeleton. And we have three parts. They, this part, okay. this part, and this part, and this part, they, are, they have the same area. They have the same number of boxes. Because if you shift, if you uh, rotate this, you will get this one and then this one. So, if you know the area of this and the area of or number of boxes here and then the number of boxes of this, you can compute number of boxes in the first uh, shell. So this is A1 because this is 6. A1. Uh, I think this should be A3. A3. But, right? Because we, we are saying that A1, A2, A3. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. Let's, let's say, you, you know what I mean. This is A3. What is this? Number of this part is exactly okay. This part is exactly this area uh, over here, and this is a a one. A one is given, and what is the area of or number of boxes in the original plane partition? So this we we have to uh, multiply this three times. Because we have one, two, three parts. But this part will be counted twi uh, three times, so we have to subtract by two. 
for each uh, diagonal entry. And for this, we just count the compute the area above each less path. And then we multiply by three because we have three, three things. So if you have that correspondence, then the number of boxes of this plane partition is equal to this. Okay? Oops. So we need to compute this all non-intersecting non lattice path from given points to given, the, from the given starting and ending points, and we compute this for this, this, for this. All right? Now, how can you do that? Any question? Okay, we are almost there. Yeah, let me finish this. Yeah, using this again. Okay. Okay. Oops. Yeah, I, we don't have enough time, so I'm going to just use this PDF. <laughs> so this is what we want to compute. Here, uh, this is equal to uh, this. So suppose we are considering all lattice path from here to there. We don't. So this can go some somewhere, some something else, uh, uh, something else other than this. So imagine you uh, switch two paths, like this part and this. Uh, suppose you have this and this. If you switch two paths after the last intersection, you don't change the weight because they are they still have the same part. So this is the different situation than the previous one. So we, actually it's easier for us. So you, you can just use this, this weight, the, uh, the area of this path, on, uh, area of the region above this path. If you switch to path, the area, the sum of the area will be the same because this part, they, they are, how can I say? Because we don't have anything that something different, okay? That means you can apply Gesell-Vienne lemma directly, and this is equal to the summation over all permutation with sign, and now we have lattice path from ith starting point to jth, or sigma ith starting point, and this can be written as a determinant like this. Because this part is just fact, this can be factored out, and lattice path uh, we sum over all lattice path q to the area, three, q to the three times area. So we have q binomial coefficient, but instead of q, we have q squared, uh, q cubed, because uh, th it, it is multiplied by three. So we express the generating function for plane par uh, cyclically symmetric, cyclically symmetric plane partition as a determinant. So the next question, how can you evaluate this? Oh, by the way, we have one more step to go, because here we specified the diagonal entries, but we don't want to specify the diagonal entry. We want to consider all plane partitions without this restriction, because we want all of them. So what we just showed is that this is a sum over all uh, shifted, plane, uh, shifted strict plane partitions with fixed diagonal entries, then we're going to have this sum. And for this given diagonal entries, we have determinant. And then we have a lemma, which is a homework. Using this lemma, this kind of thing can be written as a single determinant. So here is a sum of determinants. There are many. There are two to the r determinants. But they all add up to just one single determinant by this lemma, which is uh, homework. So we express the whole generating function for cyclically symmetric plane partitions as a single determinant. The next question is, how can you evaluate this determinant, which is uh, much more difficult than the previous word, determinant. So it's not a homework yet. <laughs> we will evaluate this hopefully later. 
but this one is more difficult because we have this identity matrix multi uh, added together, so it's more complicated. But people were able to evaluate this, and hopefully we will see the proof. That's the story of today. Thank you for your attention, and see you next week.